There are two different ways of thinking about what international relations is. There's a narrow way and a more expansive way. The narrow way of thinking about international relations is thinking about it as interstate interactions, to which most people think about diplomacy, or they might think about the breakdown of diplomacy in various forms of conflict leading up to war. The more expansive way of thinking about international relations is to think about the international component of anything that takes place in the world. So the way the department thinks about it is we have particular strengths in thinking about issues of international security, international political economy, institutions, law and ethics, foreign policy analysis, and then more theoretical issues. But we take predominantly the more expansive way of thinking about international relations. So we have a core program in BSc International Relations. We also have two partner programs, one run jointly with the History Department, the other one run jointly with the Government Department. The main difference between the programs is really just the amount of international relations you do. So on the BSc IR, you will do more core international relations courses. Uh, on the joint programs, you will be taking programs in both departments equally, which necessarily means that you'll be taking slightly fewer international relations courses. It's also worth pointing out that only the BSc International Relations is formally housed in the International Relations Department, meaning that this is where your academic advisor will be and that's the rules of the programme will be those of the International Relations Department. In your first year, you do two core courses. The first introduces you to the main theories, concepts and debates in international relations. The second is more to do with contemporary international politics. So it might deal with issues of financial crisis and inequality or globalization. It might look at pressing international challenges such as climate change or nuclear proliferation. Uh, you'll also do a non-assessed unit, which is supposed to bridge uh, what people have done at school from to university life, thinking about how to write an academic essay, how to reference, how to research, what's expected of you in a university environment. Then for your third course in the first year, you take a choice of one of two history modules. And then as a fourth option, you have relatively free reign about what to take. In your second year, you take three out of five modules. You have a choice between the five courses, and then you can choose to have one outside option in your second year. Again, there is a cluster of courses that people often take from law or government or sociology or history, but you can go further afield uh, if you can make a case for why there's a particular interest that you have in economics or accountancy or finance or whatever it might be. If your first year is about foundations and your second year is about breadth, then your third year is about specialization. So we predominantly run a range of research-led teaching modules. So rather than take a whole year course, you're more likely to take modules that run for just one term. Uh, often people take a dissertation as their fourth option, where you get a chance to run your own research. And at least half, sometimes as many as two thirds of our students choose that, both because it's a chance to show what they've gained from their three years at university, and also because employers quite like people to do that kind of research project. Practically, people tend to have come to LSE from two different routes. One is the International Baccalaureate, and the second one is A-levels. Usually, people will have done politics and history and related subjects, but if people can show the commitment to the subject and the level of quality that we require, then it's not unusual to find people coming from a fairly wide set of, of subject area backgrounds. In terms of where people come from more personally, I think of LSE as a very London university, and I mean that in two or three different ways. One is that we get a lot of students from London and the surrounding areas of London. The second is that we get a lot of people who come to London uh, for various reasons. So we are by far the most global university in the UK, like London is by far the most global city in Europe. The real benefits there are not just the kind of collage and kaleidoscope of people that we have in the school and on the program, but it's the views that those multiple backgrounds represent. The good news is that our students do get jobs. Um, we have a very high uh, percentage of people in employment after six months of completing the degree and they earn pretty decent wages. A fair amount go into NGOs, quite a few go into media and journalism of various kinds. Quite a lot of people go on to do a master's, but there's no constraint in terms of what people do. You'll find people go into finance, 
Uh, on the one hand, you might find people going into work in the charitable sector on the other, but predominantly it's people who seek and then go on to find some type of career in politics of some kind. It's where most of our graduates go.